What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new to a new show that I created called Sports Talk with your boy Iron Gradine. Check check it out. Um, time it, and now it's time for Sports Straight Talk on Sports, presented by Geico. 15 percent more on on car insurance. A lot of a lot of stuff to get into from yesterday. I'll get into M- the NBA. I'll get into the NBA games that was on yesterday. Um, I'll get into my New York Yankees in a must-win mode. I'll get on that. Plus. Plus, the NFL regular season is all set and go in two weeks. So I'll be getting into that. So, we're going to start off from yesterday's NBA playoffs. Um... The Los Angeles Clippers defeated the Dallas Mavericks and they came all the way back to win the series 4-3. Um, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and the crew played like men. Played like a bunch, bunch of play the defense that they need to play. The Boston Celtics. The Boston Celtics played a heck of a game. They set they set the tone against the Toronto Raptors. I want to get those those two games out the way. Um Knowing that, breaking news in the NFL, Leonard Fournette, who played for the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, has been released off the team. And we don't know who will be, who will, he, we don't know who is going to sign him, but we will know by the time, before the the regular season begins. We don't know yet, but we're gonna but we're gonna find out. So on top of that on top on top of that we wish him nothing but the best. And hopefully he will continue his NFL career. We got that out the way. Let's talk about yesterday's baseball game. My New York Yankees pulled it off in a big way. They needed this vi- they needed 3 victories over the Mets. But we are waiting for the for the Major League Baseball trade deadline. I'm sure I'm positive that we will sign somebody. Now the Yankees did win three three in a row on the Mets. We needed those three wins to stay on course in the American League East. Now, um, see, the Yankees didn't never didn't give up. 
they keep on fighting. But the turning point of that series, yesterday when Gary Sanchez hit that grand slam to break the game open. After that, it was all said and done, and you you win the game, and we won 5-2. Um, we have, now that the Yankees came all the way back and let, now lead the se season series on the Mets 3-2, for now, we have to play Tampa Bay. We need Aaron Judge and we need Giancarlo Stanton. We got to stay focused against Tampa Bay because Tampa Bay Rays right now is very good. Tampa Bay Rays are no joke. They know what they're doing, especially with their young players. I mean, Charlie Morton who played with the Astros and now with um, Tampa Bay we have to you know play with our, our eyes our eyes wide open and all I'm saying is that the that the New York Yankees has got to stay on course behind Tampa Bay then we have the Blue Jays and then we have Baltimore So we need we need to get back to winning the AL East division. This is a chance. And I'm ready for the NFL season. You know why? Cuz the pressure the pressure is on my New York Giants to improve this year. And I'm going to tell you why. The pressure is on my New York Giants to do to do what they need to do and that is win. That's what we're lacking. Three things must happen for the New York Giants this year. We need to play good team offense, good team defense and and finish strong. Those are the three keys that we can win and get back to the postseason. Um, I want to get that out the way. Check my people. If y'all got a chance to see my writ. See my uh, podcast, first podcast show. Check out Sports Talk with your boy, Aaron Gordine. Um, and the reason why I'm ready for the NFL season because there's teams that are playing. I checked the New York Giants schedule. Not only are we playing the Cowboys, the Eagles, besides the Cowboys, the Eagles, and the Giants. Maybe. Besides the Cowboys, Eagles, Redskins. I have a feeling everything's been lost. We have the Steelers, the Ravens, the Bengals, and the Browns this year. I have known the probably even far Do you have to say anything? Um, like I said, the pre the pressure is on my New York Giants to to win to win this year. If we have a chance to be successful, then we have to do what we are supposed to do, and that is win. And the team. The two teams in the AFC North.
that I want the Giants to beat. The Bengals and the, and the Browns. Because I don't think Baker Mayfield is going to ascend to be an elite, an elite court. Excuse me. Obviously, Stephen A. Smith from first take made a point. He made because the Cleveland Browns have been having got seven seventy plus penalties in the regular season. False starts, offsides, pass interference, illegal hands to the face, pass interference, holding calls. Illegal contact, all these things. I don't see that. Team up the teams I want to see going to the Super Bowl Saints, 49ers, Kansas City, Baltimore. Tampa Bay with Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski New England Tennessee Titans if they spoil it no I don't trust the Houston Texans because the last time they played Kansas City Chiefs they blew a 24 nothing lead and they let Patrick Mahomes Come all the way back and the team come all the way back put up 51 points and that was that there's no excuse for that this is sport Sports Talk with your boy, Ron Gordine. But uh, before I get out of here, I, I just want to let y'all know. Tonight, we got a lot of baseball going on tonight, Monday night. Tonight we got we got WWE Monday Night Raw tonight. Um, we have tonight we have the Yankees and the Tampa Bay Rays in New York City, and the Mets play tonight. So we have baseball action tonight. Also, Monday, WWE Monday Night Raw tonight. Also, we have also breaking news. Just to let you guys know, on Friday, September 4th, this week, New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy said that all re the restaurants in the state of New Jersey statewide will start indoor dining but here's the thing We're, we are doing the capacity of 25% of people but if everyone else tries to come, even though we're packed for 25 people, we just got, we're going to have to put you on the lit waiting list until somebody is done with the table eating. That's the, that's the way it's going to be. We're going to have, we're going to have to, um, we're going to, we're going to have to work with it. 
That's just the way. That's just the way it is. We just, we just, we just gotta take things step by step, and we can get through through COVID nineteen. We can get through everything. And one and someday we will everything will be normal. And hopefully once Special Olympics basketball season in New Jersey or wherever state you're from we will be back to compete for a championship everybody this is it anyway that's your book anyway that's sports that's, this is sports talk with Iran Gordine check out the next ne check out my next episode my next podcast and That's your, that's a, that's sports talk. You be you check out check out my new episode on Instagram. Check it out and we'll see we'll see we'll see what's up and talk to y'all later. What's up everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of the sports talk radio sports talk of Iron Gordine as I come love to do. Over the national airwaves, check up of the near of your of your show nearest you. Ch check me out on Instagram. Check your it. Check it. Check out. Check this out. Um, my my talk my talk sports talk show presented by Wendy's. Get buy one get one good deal for for one dollar. Time for Straight Talk, presented by Castro GTX. Drive hard. A lot of stuff to get into today. Um, the NFL kickoff season is here today. Tonight, the Houston Texans facing off against the Super Bowl champions the the Kansas City Chiefs at Arrowhead Stadium it's going to be pat it's going to be 17,000 fans here tonight time now the pressure the pressure is on the Houston Texans to win this game if you look back to last season, Houston Texans in the play in the divisional round had a 24 nothing lead. Um they lost. They gave up a 24 nothing lead to Kansas City Chiefs. And they lost 31 to 51. And that led the way to the Kansas City Chiefs to win in the Super Bowl in Miami, down South Beach. The road to the Super Bowl now, I still believe that's going to go through Kansas City. Now listen. A lot of a lot of things to get into. Also, we have baseball. We have the New York Yankees taking on the Baltimore Orioles in um, at at the New Yankee Stadium in New York City. We're almost there to the ma to the hunt for October Major League Baseball playoffs. That will determine to see. Who will be the next World Series champions? We'll have to find out. But right now, we're focusing on the NFL season. Then, the rest of the games will be... 
on Sunday of NFL action and Saturday we have college football you will see Clemson Tigers go head-to-head -head against Wake Forest Saturday night also a marquee matchup on Sunday during NFL you will see the Packers against the Vikings Monday Night Football the the New York Giants will take on the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh Pennsylvania you got two games on Monday night Steelers and the Giants and the the Broncos and the Tennessee Titans that's the that's a late game at 10 o'clock at 10 15 in Denver Colorado at Mile High Stadium but I still say that the road to the Super Bowl the road to the road to the Super Bowl will have to go through Kansas City Chiefs because they're clearly the favorite. And as you all know, the Oakland Raiders the Oakland Raiders have moved to Las Vegas. So can you imagine at Las Vegas, Nevada watching the Las Vegas Raiders and you are at the game gambling making money betting betting on a game and you win money as the Raiders win man I could never I could never vision myself going to I mean, going to uh, Las Vegas I know the 49ers will still still has a shot going back to the Super Bowl, but I believe they still have a chance of winning. NHJ ESPN. My beliefs is this. Everything the road to the Super Bowl starts now. Hey, what's up, Thomas? What up, Iron? Well, what's up? How you doing? Not much. I'm doing my, I'm just doing my sports talk sports talk podcast. You know. You got a podcast? Yeah, I'm doing it. Nice. I'm, I'm doing an anime podcast soon. Yeah. I'm gonna be doing a podcast real soon in the near future. Yep, that's my project. Just letting you know what sports is on tonight and this uh, week. Have you, talk, have you been talking to Cynthia lately? What's up? Have you been talking to Cynthia? Yeah. Darwin passed away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, she called me on Saturday. Who called you on Saturday? Huh? Who called you on Saturday? Cynthia called me on Saturday. I was Long on the phone. Oh, like, man. I still talk to my girlfriend on the phone. Yeah. yeah. We still together. We still together for 13 years. Oh, yeah. 13 years. It's going to be our 14th, 14 year anniversary. Bro, I've been singing like forever. Yeah. I remember everyone in Children's Center tried to break us up, but that didn't work. <laughs> yeah, she's been home with family. Her aunt her aunt just texted me months ago and she um 
She told me to give to give her her niece Amanda my phone number for her to call me, and then we talked talked throughout the night. I've talked to Ariel Jones. He's been he's been busy work he's been busy working in Children's Center with kindergarten kindergarten with the kids. Uh, and he's been make and he's been making money. Lots of lots of money though. Yeah. Sure. Well, let me think so. I, I've been having an adventure since 2013, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Yeah. I met uh some of Michael Jackson's uh, backup dancers. You did? Uh, you know, uh, one of his answers from the bad and baby stores in history. Yes. Uh, Lavelle Smith. Yep. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I met, I, I met some, I met some Michael Jackson tribute artists. Mm-hmm. I met the voice actor of Goku. I bet you everybody gonna, I bet you everybody's gonna be asking you, like, they they probably want you to do do like another Michael Jackson trip con, tribute performance. I'm at the voice actor Andrew Yep. I bet the I bet the people you know when it's safe when it's safe again. Yeah. I bet they're gonna ask you, you know, to do another Michael Jackson contribute contri performance. You know, with a group of people. In some in some places. Absolutely. All I can say, all I can tell you is this, though, Thomas. I mean, as as long as people, as long as you're doing your thing, you know, doing all your Michael Jackson tribute perform performances. Everybody. Everybody knows you good. You show that demonstration, you know. Yeah. I mean, picture that. You remember when, when we were in Mr. Mike Tercy's class and and Christina Volpe? I I get where she's coming. From. I get I get it. She didn't like. She doesn't like to listen to Michael Jackson. I don't. I for, I get that. Everyone has their own yeah, but when she left, yeah. when she when she left after she graduated in two thousand nine, I had to stay here till two thousand eleven. I had to How stay. Come? Huh? How come? I was nineteen at the time. I mean, I graduated till two thousand eleven. Yeah. I had Miss Amory Boriello for two more years. I left. After, yeah, I had, when when you left, I yeah. stayed till 2011. I had yeah. to deal with one person, Tykel Miller, who has been a thorn on my side yeah. for a year. In Mr. Dennison's class, he's been a thorn on my side for a year. And thank goodness, he's not even in Children's Center anymore. It happened. Then, I, then, two years later, I graduated from Children's Center. And then, hey, yeah. I'm here, sir. Okay, I mean, after I graduated in 2011, I, I, I quite, I kind of, um, you know, left, got a job, and moved on, and and then once I saw you, your videos of um, doing big, doing a lot of Michael Jackson tribute music performances, I kind of seen you. Entertain people, showing the talent that you got. 
You know, I went to New York Comic Con, huh? right? I went to New York Comic Con. Yes. I th- oh, guess what? I'm, I met Stan Lee. Yes, I've seen. I've seen that um that video when you did. No, really, I met Stan yeah, Lee. Yeah, I did. I seen that. Vi- I seen that video. It was. I even got his book. Yeah, I saw that on Instagram. He signed one of my X Men comics. And I yeah, I saw. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that picture on um on Instagram. Yeah, and all the girls, all the girls are lovely. My goodness, man. Yep. Man, I'm, I mean, come to think about it, Thomas, I I say, as long as you continue to do your thing, you good. Yeah, I mean you. I mean, maybe they should put you on a record on a record label. They got. They got to put you on a record label on the music for music. That way. That way you. That way, when you perform on the st- perform, like Michael Jackson did, like out of the country. But it's still not safe. Look all the countries that Michael Jackson performed throughout his career. London, England. 80, 86,000 fans. He said a... Yeah. During the bad tour. In Wimbledon. 86,000 86, fans. He said he said a he said a record for most people during the bad tour. Well, seventeen thousand people. Yeah. Yeah, seventeen thousand people. Yeah, that's 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 you know, celebrate our 14 year anniversary. Our relationship is going to be better. Is our relationship is going to be better than so than Triple H and Stephanie McMahon? I'm sorry. You know, that's not watching wrestling, right? Yeah, I did meet both Triple H and Stephanie McMahon in, in person. Yes, I did. When they were sponsoring Special Olympics down in Lawrenceville, Lawrenceville, New Jersey. Oh, you yep, I saw the Big Show coaching a Special Olympics soccer team, and and Natalia Nyhart, Bret Hart's niece. They were they were coaching a Special Olympic soccer team, and w- yes, and once I met the Big Show, still seven feet. Actually, yeah, I know you met. I saw the picture of you meeting Bret Hart. Yes, I did. I saw that, and I did meet a. Uh, and I did meet up. The only three people I saw, two, four people I saw was Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, The Big Show, and Natalia Nyhart. They were there. But then Triple H had to get back to East Rutherford for Extreme Rules that week because him, Batista, and Randy Orton were facing the Shield. And I'm like, Big Show's still 500 pounds? But obviously, he lost weight. He's 487. Yeah, he lost... He's not 500 pounds. He's 7 feet tall, and he's like 486. Brock Lesnar was 295 pounds. He lost nine pounds. He's now two eighty six. 
But I can still say... And he's still a beast. Yeah, he is. And plus, he's still 295 pounds. A-Train's not there anymore. Nathan Jones not there anymore. Matt Morgan. He moved to TNA. Every Alberto Del Rio left. He moved to TNA. Christian left. Mm hmm. Yeah, Christian uh, retired. Edge, reti Edge retired because he had a career threatening injury. That's, I didn't want Edge to surrender the world heavyweight title. Christian actually had a picture on Facebook. Now yeah. Now the now there's a new wrestling organization called All Elite Wrestling. I was it yeah. Day. Chris Jer Chris Jericho, he he's there yeah. at that new organization. So is Dean Ambrose from The Shield. Yeah. Man. And also Eddie Guerrero's daughter, Shaw. Not Sherilyn, Shaw. Yeah, two daughters. Sherilyn and Shaw. Yeah. Eddie Guerrero had two kids, has two kids with Vicky Guerrero. Yeah. I miss him. Man. Vicky Guerrero's not even there anymore. She got fired. I'm talking about CM Who? CM Punk. CM Punk retired after he lost oh, yeah. after he beat the shield. At um, yeah. At tables, ladders, and chairs in a handicap match, three on one handicap match. Yeah. Anyone else you you trying to you miss you you miss? Like What's up? Like who you talking about? Wrestling or? Um, I still watch wrestling. Still watch um, teen. I watch some old stuff from the nineties. Yeah, I'm missing Tarzan. Yep, at, from the Attitude I'm Era. I'm missing Debra. Yeah, Debra. Debra's still married to Stone Cold Steve Austin. I miss things. Uh, I miss China. Yeah, Stone Cold Steve Austin got his own podcast. Yeah, it's Chris got podcast Yeah, Thomas, imagine you being the next guest of Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast. Yeah, Stone Cold gonna have to ask you a lot of questions. And you know, and you know, man, I miss The Undertaker. I really do. He had to retire because he was getting old. Yeah, yeah, I remember. When he lost to Brock Lesnar, but he did, yeah, but he know. did get his hands on Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, and he won. He won. He, because Brock Lesnar passed out on Hell's Gate, and Paul Heyman said that the Undertaker didn't win. Undertaker won. Brock Lesnar passed out. He didn't tap out. He passed out from Hell's Gate. Yeah. 
He won. Then he beat, but at WrestleMania 31, he beat Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Yeah, WrestleMania 32. Yep. Bray, Bray Wyatt, you know, he told Undertaker when Undertaker got in the ring at WrestleMania 31, he said, you see this? These people, he said, these people belong to me. Undertaker didn't care what, what you say. You know, there was a moment of Undertaker versus 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 Undertaker Undertaker never left, but he had to. Well, you know how it is, dude. Why don't Russell move him out to your body? He has 27 WrestleMania victories. Got to give him credit. And you got to give him credit for being a WWE champion and world heavyweight champion. And winning his first Royal Rumble. It's been a long time since he won his first... Has, he hasn't won a, his first Royal Rumble yet. He hasn't won it yet. Because he kept being eliminated. Yeah. And my favorite Undertaker moment when he, during that biker, that bike era, when he, when he, um, When he returned on Raw and he called out Test and Christian and Christian was part of the Un Americans. I'm like That was actually What's up? That was two thousand two the Un Americans. Yeah, two thousand two. The Undertaker was pretty uh was still was still the same, even though he had tattoos. That was before he changed changed back to who he was in 2004. Yeah. 2003, I was fed up with Kane. Because he electrocuted Shane McMahon in the testicles. Yeah, that was the, that was, that, that was scary. Yeah. But Thomas, if you if you read if you if you reunited the brood, would you attack would y'all attack Kane? If if oh, Shane God. McMahon get electrocuted in the testicles, yeah. Yeah. you know what the brood was known for? Yes. And remember, the Hardy Boys tr almost got into a bloodbath by the Brood. And the Brood got a taste of their own medicine. But, yeah, I know. Yeah, Jeff Hardy, I remember, I was like, Congratulating Jeff Hardy when he won his first WWE championship. I was very happy for him. And I was very happy for Christian winning the World Heavyweight Championship in a ladder match against Alberto Del Rio. But when he went to TNA, he won the the NWA World Heavyweight Championship against Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, absolutely. But the one person I did not like from him was um, Tyson Tomko because 
Christian gave him the nickname the problem solver, which he tells him to beat people up. Thomas, what if we cr recreated the brood? The brood. With Gangrel or Edge and Christian and and to and take the places of Edge and Christian, and we assaulted the brood. The prob the problem is, the brood, like which is me, you, and Gangrel, would beat up on Kane, and I leave him in a bloody mess. If some if Kane try to uh. Do something if somebody if Kane did something desperately. I never liked what Kane did to Linda McMahon, tube stoning her on the st on the steel on that steel stage. He took off his mask. Yeah. I said, can you can you imagine? Kane's own brother, The Undertaker, is somewhere watching. Yeah. And what about his father, Paul Bearer? Like yeah, yeah, I miss Paul Bearer. But he, when he returned in 2004, he told Kane, who was sick, twisted, he said, you ain't no son of mine. Because remember what Cain told Paul Bear, Paul Bear told Cain, you're stupid, you're weak, you can't even speak for yourself. That was the day after Judgment Day. Yeah. I don't know. Paul Bear used Cain. Well, that was the start of the ministry. Yep. But Paul Bear did did tell the world that he is the father of Cain. And when Paul Bear said that his that that the Undertaker's mother was a two bit whore, and once uh, and when Undertaker came out. He beat up Paul Bear. I was sorry, all of this. Yes, but why would you say that about the Undertaker's mother? But in the, but but on that ne the next week the next week, it was Undertaker Austin against Kane and Mankind in a Hell in a Cell tag team match, but. When Undertaker popped out from under the ring in the cell, he beat up Paul Bearer for the thing he said about his mom. Because if you remember what J.R. Jim Ross said, Paul Bearer was the object of the Undertaker's anger. He was. Because Undertaker didn't need Paul Bear on his side. He wanted to fight his own battles. But what the Undertaker did, he didn't want to see his, ba his baby brother get burned again. Well, the, he, did, he did the right thing at King of the Ring. Because at King of the Ring, when Undertaker hit Austin in the head with a chair, because he saved his brother, because he didn't want to be set on fire. But the one thing I laughed, when Undertaker and Kane broke, when Undertaker and Kane broke Vince McMahon's ankle, do you remember that, Thomas? I laughed. Because if 
Because when Mr. McMahon stuck up his middle finger at the Brothers of Destruction, The Undertaker, when it, the cops wasn't even in the ring, I laughed at Vince McMahon, but then he gonna blame it on Austin. For what? Yeah, I know you mean that. Well, Undertaker and Kane did what they had to do to get rid of their problem. Austin's not their problem. It's Vince McMahon. Once they broke his ankle, Vince McMahon called Austin out. Because I can't believe the big boss man that I respected worked for the corporation. But when The Undertaker created the ministry with the Acolytes, Midian, Viscera, and the Brood, they were scaring Stephanie McMahon. I was pretty scared. And The Undertaker had that devilish beard. And guess who... And guess who... And guess who tried to kick, guess who almost kicked his butt? Ken Shamrock. Like, Ken Shamrock, you really going to break the Undertaker's leg? I'm like, Ken Shamrock, go ahead. I say, I guarantee you, Ken Sharon's going to break The Undertaker's leg like a twig. Mm. Oh, yeah, backlash. Yes, I remember. And the brood almost beat the ministry. They were close. But Christian got squashed yeah. by Viscera. By Viscera. If the, if the brood would have won... The under then the Undertaker's music would have popped out. You know this or not, Yes, right? I know. God bless him. God bless his soul. Yeah. Especially when when he was with the it with the ministry with Viscera, actually with Midian. Yeah. They were dominant. But when it, but when it's with Midian and no, Viscera. They're, but with Viscera and the Acolytes, their combined weight is like yeah. 900 plus pounds. But with The Undertaker and Midian, 1,048. Oh. Like, really? 1,000 plus pounds in a tag team match? Yeah, Unbelievable! Like how? How's the brew gonna look up this? What's one? up? I was watching the brew versus uh, Viscera and the Acolyte. I'm saying, how's the brew gonna look up Viscera? He weighs like 500 pounds. I don't know. I mean, their combined, their total combined weight with well, Chris, 227. Yes. Gangrel weighs two. The Edge weighs 200. And yeah, Midian was like 250 and. Farouk, who was part of the the nation of domination, Farouk's like two seventy eight, and Bradshaw two hundred like two ninety two ninety seven. They're like the whole Ministry of Darkness weight combined weight was one thousand plus pounds. Uh, I'm gonna let you go.